So guys ask me all the time, what makes your player shad? You know, what sets it apart from all the other, let's call them minnow baits that are on the market now because this technique's becoming so popular and everybody is starting to make a bait or a product that's kind of aimed at it. So what makes the player shad different? Or what sets it apart? Well, f a couple of things, but first of all, to me is the profile. I mean, that is the player shad right there. And that is a shad and it's that perfect size. It's that, it's that three inch length. This is the most common size shad that you have in most bodies of water throughout the year. Now I understand if you have a body of water that has a lot of big gizzard shad in it, and I'm not saying that this is the only shad that there is that exists, but this is a perfect bite size shad for your average bass, be it a spotted bass, large mouth, small mouth, whatever. But when it comes to the design standpoint, so for, for me, the, you know, the size is perfect, the profile is perfect, it looks just like a shad, um, and it really does. You see how thin it is, it looks just like a shad, but you see how it's moving right there? You see how that tail's moving? I'm not moving, it's moving. Okay, so if I hold the player shad by the nose, like say I've got it hooked on a drop shot, I cannot make that bait be still. So y'all think about that. Whenever, whenever I'm rigging this bait and if I'm fishing it, say if I'm fishing it vertically and I have a bait, you know, a lot of baits on the market that are, that are thicker, that are real rigid, when you're holding that bait over the top of a fish, looking at them on your electronic, trying to get them to come up and get it, that bait's just sitting there. No part of that bait is really moving. The player shad, my heartbeat will make the tail of the player shad move. And, and here's what causes that. I'm gonna try to make it where you can see it, but if you look on the side of the player shad right here, it has a V on both sides. It almost looks like a lateral line. It's very natural looking. But without that V, if you held a bait this thin out, it would just be like a noodle. It would be like that. It would have no resistance. So that, that V transition on the side is what enables the player shad to be so thin and so shad-like. But that V also acts like an energy transmitter. So if I, if I touch my arm, watch the tail of that bait. So you can imagine if you just bump your rod tip. A lot of times when I'm fishing the player shad, I'll put my hand on my rod where I can stick my finger out so that when I'm reeling with my spinning rod, my line is t t tipping the end of my finger as my bail of my reel rotates around. And just that will make that player shad, every time it tips when I'm reeling it, it'll make that tail pulse. So it's super, super, super natural, super lifelike. Um, I get asked all the time how I rig it. There's two main ways that I rig the player shad. I love to rig it on a nose hook. Um, on a BKK drop shot, I like the size one or even a one alt. If I nose hook it on a drop shot, uh, I've got some underwater footage of it. This thing looks, it looks just like a dying shad in the water. Um, I posted some underwater footage on it a day or two back. Y'all can scroll back in my history and look at it. If you watch the video of this, if you're not really paying attention, you'll think it's an actual shad in the water. It looks that realistic and that's rigged on a drop shot. Now, if I'm casting it to suspended fish, or just fishing it vertical, suspended in the water column, not wanting to fish it on the bottom, I'll often put it on a jig head. This is the primal shad head jig head. And this is an eighth. And the eighth is the size that I use the most, especially this time of the year, I'm not normally fishing super deep. Um, but the primal jig head fits this player shad perfectly. It's got a little one alt gamagatsu hook when I thread it on there, if I come out right at the beginning, you see my hook point exiting right at the beginning of the fin on the back, and then I push the player shad up on this primal shad head jig head, it's, it fits perfect. And again, you just, you can't hold it and make it be still. That's what makes the player shad, that's what sets the player shad apart. Yes, it looks just like a shad, and that was the intention, but it also, is far more lifelike. This bait is doing more in the water than what than what you realize. I know it's just a straight tail bait, but the subtleness and the subtle actions that this bait create, the veins on the side of it, the little the little wedges on the end of the tail making it catch water, making that tail quiver, pulse back and forth and shake. Even if a fish, if you're holding this bait motionlessly, just just sitting there with it, and a fish swims up to this bait, 
the water that that fish pushes is gonna make this bait move and quiver and pulse. And I mean, I don't know about y'all, but the fish I fish for nowadays, it seems like they're more pressured than they've ever been. Uh, the, the more electronics there becomes part of bass fishing, uh, the less of a break these fish get. And for me, I want a bait that is absolutely as realistic as I can possibly get. And that's what I set out to make when I made the player shad. And that's what sets the player shad apart to me from so many other just standard minnows that are out there.